What's up everybody, Sam Smites here. Today I want to explain how to use additive synthesis in Serum, but before we get started, please go ahead and give this video a like, and please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. Additive synthesis is the idea that you use a combination of sine waves to create complex sounds. So you can start with one sine wave at a certain frequency and a certain amplitude, and then maybe add on another sine wave on top of that with a different frequency and a different amplitude, and then just keep doing that so that you create these complex sounds. The difference between that and subtractive synthesis, subtractive synthesis, you start with something that is already uh, harmonically rich and complex. For example, like this default wavetable, which is a saw wave, you're gonna have a lot of harmonics within that saw wave. You start with that and then you add on like a filter, take away some of those harmonics. That's the idea of subtractive synthesis. So like, let me just open up a span real quick. So for example, if I play a saw wave, it'll look like this in my span. And you can see all of this harmonic content that is in there. And if I add on a filter, then I take away some of that harmonic content and let's play it now. And that is the idea of subtractive synthesis. Well, additive synthesis is the idea where, let's say we have a sine wave like this. You can see it is just this one point on the frequency spectrum analyzer. We have this specific frequency and it has a specific, uh, let's say 245, what note was I playing B? So I was playing a B notes. That's around probably, you could probably figure out the exact Hertz on there. I'm just going off of what it says, 250 or something. And then the amplitude is set around there. So then you take that and then you add on another sine wave, another sine wave, another sine wave to create a uh, complex tones. Now, aside from Serum, there are other examples of additive synthesis. And I like to think of these draw bar organs or just organs in general organs. They usually have different harmonics of sine waves. If you think of like a pipe organ, when one pipe creates a tone, it sounds like a sine wave. And then you add multiple pipes together. You're adding all of these tones, um, which is almost like additive synthesis. This here is going to be a draw bar organ from Arturia, it's just their B3V. I don't know what draw bar it's, uh, organ it's based off of. But if I play this, this is just the jazz organ. Default, you can hear all these different tones of this sine wa wave-like sound. Now these draw bars, as you pull these down and adjust them, you're adding in more of these harmonics. So it's if I take them all down. I just hear this percussive sound. So I'm gonna take that off. Nothing is turned on, pulled down. So I'll pull this one down, playing just the C notes. And you get that like organ sound just by playing one note. And then when you play a chord, it's like super rich because I'm just playing three notes. But then you have all these uh, sine wave-ish tones. I'm, I'm saying ish because it doesn't sound exactly like a sine wave. It's whatever the tone that this organ had that they're trying to replicate. This is how you can do the additive synthesis in Serum. Is I will open up this wavetable editor. We have a sine wave. I'm just going to clear this out. So up here is these bins. And I like to think of these bins almost as the draw bars because let's clear this. I just right clicked and cleared that. And if I drag a bin upward, you can see the percentages. Let's do this to 100%. It's gonna create a perfect sine wave shape on there. So if I play this on my keyboard, then we have a C note. Now these bins in Serum is what they're called. One, two, et cetera. The ones that are a little bit lighter gray are going to be the octave harmonic. So if I add this first bin, You can hear I'm adding in all the harmonics. And it's a bit strange how this works. If I click up here, it's gonna add more to this bin, but it's gonna take down the amplitude of all the other bins. So a lot of times I'm just clicking in these different bins, trying to create various types of sounds.
to figure out ones that I like. And then you have these other partials in between which are not the octave, like this one. I believe the third one is going to be 19 semitones above. And if you do want further clarification, this is just the Sierra manual. It explains this FFT area, which is what that area is called. Now I'm going to right click and clear all of these. Let's go ahead and create a sine wave again, put that at 100%. This lower section is going to affect the phase. Now the amplitude, let's think of that as the Y axis and then the phase. Let's think of that as the X axis and that is going to shift things on the X axis, which is like left or right. Now this bottom one is going to allow me to affect the phase. And if I shift this over 50%, then it should just flip this to look like I shift this section over to this area. So I'll drag this up to about 50%. And you can see, I just like, it looks like I flipped the phase because perfect. That's uh, it, when two things are perfectly out of phase, then they'll cancel out. So if you played this shape on top of another shape that is, let's go ahead and open this up and do a basic shapes like this. Take down this bin and I'm playing a note, but nothing is coming out because they're canceling each other out. They're perfectly out of phase. Let's go back in here. Now, when you add in other bins, then you can start affecting the phase of these other uh, bins or harmonics as well. It doesn't really change the tone that much because you're really just affecting the phase. So you're just shifting it a little bit left or right for each of these little bins. So we're not adding more harmonics or changing like the level, you're just affecting the phase. So I don't really mess around with that, this section, the phase too much. Really, I just play around with this top section. Now, when I right click up here, it, I can also just click and drag and create fun shapes like this. Randomly, I'll clear all that. Uh, let's do generate saw. Now you can see the shape of these bins that creates a saw sound. If I place my cursor over a bin, then it will allow me to clear all the high frequency bins. That's gonna be all the bins that are to the right and then all the low frequency ones. If I clear all the high frequency ones to the right of where I have my cursor placed, I can also clear everything on the low end. And of course, because I cleared the top end, it cleared out the whole thing. Let's generate a saw. Then you have some randomization options. This allows you just to randomize, come up with different sounds. And there are shift octave, octave up. I can do draw even harmonics only. So when I click in here, it's only going to fill in the even harmonics. Let's clear this. I can do draw odd harmonics only. That's going to allow me to draw in only the odd harmonics. And I can snap these vertical draw to quarters. In other words, it will be like zero. So look at the percentages. It'll be zero, 25, 50, 75, 100. So I can just snap it to like a vertical grid essentially. And this last one, scale frequency values by bin index, I guess it just is visually scaling it somehow the way that I see it. Um, as opposed to, let's take this off, let's see, it'll have this scale of a different, I guess that is just like more of a visual thing. So let me uh, actually uncheck all of these and let's do clear all. Let's add in the sine wave. This is a great way to create organ sounds. It's also a great way to manipulate if you are trying to 
create a sound, your wavetable to get more harmonics out of it. Now, the additive synthesis that I, that I described was just taking a sine wave and then adding more sine waves on top of that. But what's cool about Serum is that you could start with a pretty interesting wavetable. You don't have to start with a sine wave. You can start with any wavetable in here. So let's, I don't know, let's, what's this one? I want to find one that has like heavy harmonics in it. But I like this one. Like that has some harmonics in it that I can now play around with if I go into my editor here. I can... Manipulate the sound and change the harmonics of just that one wavetable. So when I am using this bin section, a lot of times it's when I need to get some extra harmonics out of a lead sound where there's a lot of brightness in it and I hear some harmonics in there that were probably added from multiple layers or some kind of dist distortion or saturation that I can't really get. Instead of trying to figure out what like saturation plugin they used in their sound, I will just maybe go into here find a wavetable that's pretty close and then see if uh, changing some of these harmonics in in this bin section by adding in some frequencies, some sine wave frequencies to my wavetable gets me closer to the sound that I'm trying to replicate. So hopefully that helps you understand how to use additive synthesis in a serum. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. And if you'd like to check out any of my senior presetbacks, head on over to store.samsmyers.com.